So on this channel, we've discussed a lot of the ships utilized by the MCRN throughout the course of the TV show The Expanse, and we've basically touched on every single ship class one by one. But there is one class that we have missed. So today we're going to talk about the D-Class Fleet Transport and Fleet Support Vessel. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So the D-Class supply ship wasn't actually really a mainstay warship. It wasn't present through a lot of the show and really only appeared in Season 5, where we only see one ship of this class. However, I think it's safe to assume that there were others. I am, of course, talking about the Barkeith, the only D-Class vessel we ever actually see on screen. It is a D-Class supply ship slash fleet support ship, meaning it filled a couple different roles, but most of them were logistical. But, like its warship counterparts, I think we should jump in with its statistics. At 109 meters long, the D-Class is actually pretty short for most ships within the Expanse. It's comparable in size to the light cruiser utilized by Marco, the Pella, uh, but it's much smaller than a lot of other vessels within the fleet, things like the Scirocco class assault cruisers, for example, which would have been nearly twice the length of this vessel. It's powered by a pair of Epstein drives, likely meaning it's on the slower side, which makes sense for its primary role as a fleet support ship, but it does have an interesting armament. Now, that may surprise you. It's a transport ship. Why is it armed at all. As such, it's armed with a network of eight PDCs, which should be sufficient to protect the vessel against any incoming fire from torpedoes or anything that gets too close, as well as 20 torpedoes stored internally and fired out of one or two torpedo tubes. We don't know how many. As a result, the vessel isn't completely unarmed and is capable of defending itself and even, on occasion, carrying out offensive operations. But it's also clear, at least for its size and for its configuration, that it was intended more to serve as a transport and support vessel, which is what its name suggests. The primary role of the D-Class was to fill something similar to what the U.S.'s sort of fleet support vessels fill. They likely carried a surplus of fuel and ammunition for warships so that once those ships had expended their fuel or ammunition, they could resupply from a D-Class vessel that could be following behind the fleet. This basically allows them to sort of pool their resources in some separate vessel that they can keep distant from combat, put somewhere where it really wouldn't be in harm's way, while the fleet themselves put themselves directly in the line of fire. One thing that's interesting about the D-Class's armament is that it's very different from what the UN does. As far as we know, the UN's transport vessels, at least what's described in the book, appear to be completely unarmed, requiring escorts to protect them against things like pirates. But the D-Class, however, seems to have built defense right into the vessel, something that likely saves on the number of hulls they have to build, which makes perfect sense for a organization like the MCRN, which is working with limited resources being based on Mars. However, this does sort of change the image of the D-Class as a whole, where the UN's supply ships could be considered non-combatants, completely unarmed, and not really fair game for carrying out attacks against those vessels, the D-Class would be a justifiable target. It has weapon systems and can carry out offensive operations if needed. Now, it's likely that the MCRN had quite a few ships of this class, likely somewhere between 10 and 15 to supply their various fleets across the system. That being said, while there likely were more ships of this class built, we only ever see one on screen, the Barkeith. The Barkeith is a D-class supply ship, like I mentioned, that was part of the Martian fleet that split away from the MCRN and sort of went rogue during the Free Navy Crisis. The Barkeith served as the flagship for this rogue Martian faction, and actually accompanied a pair of heavy frigates to be delivered to Marco's Free Navy right before the Battle of the Soul Gate. And during the Battle of the Soul Gate, the gate to the Nexus, the Barkeith actually led the Martian rebel forces to carry out an attack against the remaining UN ships in the orbit of the gate. In fact, it was from the Barkeith that the order was given for the Martian rebel forces to fire on the last two remaining UN Truman-class battleships guarding the Ring Gate, the UNN Tripoli and the UNN Montenegro. Their destruction ultimately led to the gate falling to Marco's forces and to the Barkeith and its accompanying rebel fleet being able to slip through, making their way to Laconia. The Barkeith was, however, ultimately destroyed, passing through the gate to Laconia, as it was a victim of the Ring Gate Anomaly, which destroys vessels passing through the rings. 
And beyond the Barkeith, we don't know of any other ships of this class, but like I said, there likely were more. After all, there were plenty of MCRN fleets operating across the system, all of which would have needed logistical support and supply. And if you'd like to learn about the way the MCRN organized their fleets, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think the D-Class would be a legitimate target in a war. Do you think it's okay to attack a supply ship if the supply ship is sufficiently armed? Or do you think, seeing its role as a supply ship or a fleet support ship, it's technically off-limits for any hostile force engaging the MCRN? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in The Expanse, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.